Having seen all the technological developments and deployment upgrades that EE and Vodafone have done since the commencement of 2017, it is now time to take a look at what O2 has done in the same period. Going back a few weeks, I took a trip to Slough, which is the city with which O2 UK's headquarters are based. And I was visiting a site just on the outskirts of town. And on this mast, quite a busy mast of antennas for quite a complicated standard sort of radio layout. However, what drew my attention was a nine port Huawei antenna connected up to an ARF port Huawei RIU. And this mast was broadcasting 2.3 gigahertz TDD, so that's band 40 on the network code of 23402 which is O2's test code and the reason it's using the test code is because band 40 or 2.3 gigahertz is not yet licensed spectrum in the UK. The auction process for networks to bid to acquire that auction will hopefully be in 2017 but there is the potential dependent on competitor actions that may delay that. This is very interesting because that antenna having eight RF ports indicates the ability to do a variety of MIMO configurations which of course can massively boost capacity, overall capacity as well as individual user speeds dependent on the exact configuration chosen. In lieu of the fact that there's four 10 megahertz blocks of the spectrum available and it is TDD. The most likely conclusion in my opinion is that O2 will probably get 20 megahertz band 40 and 20 megahertz will then go to the other operators who can bid on it. Of course they could win more, they could win less. However, 20 megahertz is a reasonable opinion and one that I've come across other people suggesting as well. Unfortunately, as the spectrum is TDD, 20 MHz does not provide a tremendous amount of capacity unless you do higher order MIMO techniques and technologies like beamforming which can massively increase your total throughput on a cell. And I'm sure in dense urban areas we'll definitely see higher order MIMO techniques, even potentially massive MIMO deployed on 2.3 gigahertz should, well, if O2 does win 2.3 gigahertz in the upcoming spectrum auctions. There is also 3.4 gigahertz spectrum available to be used in the TDD scheme, and there's a lot of 3.4 gigahertz spectrum available However, unlike the 2.3 GHz, 3.4 has much reduced penetration and also much smaller device support on sort of current flagship devices because 2.3 GHz is already supported by a lot of current flagship devices. So a network, especially O2, who is desperately short of capacity in certain areas at the moment, will really want that immediately usable spectrum to deploy on their really busy sites. There have been some clues that O2 is preparing to do a deployment of TDD Spectrum in the form of planning applications for masts and these include a GPS antenna which is very significant because TDD based systems require a very accurate time signal which comes usually through GPS. So the installation of a GPS antenna is very indicative of a TDD installation happening and clearly up to this point O2 has not been rolling out any TDD spectrum. So why suddenly before the auctions for TDD spectrum is O2 deploying a GPS antenna for TDD? Well they're going to be very certain that they're going to win some TDD spectrum the planning applications for GPS antennas and additional works have not just been showing up on planning applications for macro sites like rooftops, but also for bellbox style micro cell slash small cell deployments, which are used for network densification in ultra high load areas. 
Now this neatly helps me transition to talking about O2's microcells and small cell strategy and existing approaches. O2 has a huge amount of microcells deployed in urban areas but predominantly London. Now these vary a lot in terms of what they carry frequency and technology wise obviously due to sort of the time and purpose that they were originally installed. However, many of them are getting upgraded and many of them are getting the GPS antenna added to them as well alongside additional boxes. Now, a fairly standard O2 microcell in somewhere like London will have 2100 MHz 3G broadcasting on it because up until fairly recently there wasn't 4G and 3G load was obviously not just carrying your data but also the critical component of being voice and SMS as well. And the 3G 2100 MHz ones used one bell box or one box on the wall. However, many of them have been getting upgraded and one of them, for example, one of the highest capacity ones I've seen is in Cheapside in central London, fairly near St Paul's. And this microcell has been upgraded to carry 3G2100 MHz with one sector, 4G800 with one sector, and two sectors of 4G1800 MHz. So really quite a capacity upgrade there if you think going from straight 3G2100 to also additionally having one sector of 4G800 and two sectors of 4G1800. However, this is three boxes, and many of the new applications with the GPS antenna have four boxes. So that makes you think, what is the fourth box going to be carrying, especially with a GPS antenna, which of course leads you to the conclusion of TDD spectrum, i.e. 2.3 gigahertz or 3.4. We learnt a bit about the Beacon Unwind in London, in the Vodafone video where Vodafone is now deploying more capacity into the O2 half of London and likewise similar things have been said to be happening in South London which is the Vodafone controlled area so now O2 are deploying more capacity and unwinding some of the sharing in that area as well. Unfortunately I have not seen any more 4G 2100 megahertz spread beyond Lincoln so far this year, although I'm sure that will appear much more as will 4G 1800 MHz out of area in time. So thanks for watching this video. You might notice that the image looks rather different because I've just decided to try filming a video with my phone instead of the ancient camcorder that I've been using for most of the videos before this and actually the phone's image quality does actually look a lot better, seeing as this is shooting in 4K as opposed to 1080i.